I'm Elizabeth Simonson, and I'm a visual artist that does large sculptural installations. I like to work with material that is kind of recognizable in the everyday world, things like beads, tape, wire, and then transform them into something that is kind of unrecognizable from a distance until you get up closer. So I think I counted 23 is what goes on one of these. So that's what I'm gonna do, 23. It's not only complicated in building the shapes, but the sequence of building the shapes. I have to do it in a certain order. You know, it just kind of like makes my brain ache, but that usually is what my work's about. So I usually, it usually happens at some point. I first got familiar with Elizabeth um, through, I think it was an exhibition at the Weissman Museum. I thought her work was quite strong in the way that it really made something quite elegant and uh, complicated out of something very simple. I just felt that she was an artist who worked very well with space and who you know, responded well to architecture. And I thought she might be a good person to um, invite to do one of our projects in our public spaces here at the Walker. Immediately when I saw the space, it kind of looked to me like a huge aquarium. It's an atrium that links the lower lobby to the restaurant above. I'd already done a few of these globe pieces that also looked sort of like sea creatures. They, people kept thinking they were like jellyfish. So I thought, well, I'll just sort of create the evolution of a globe. So at the one end of the space, you see this kind of spider web. And then I just start laying in rows and rows and rows of beads. And they kind of start to form their own little imperfections and curves. There's a logic at play to all the work that she does. It's kind of mathematical, kind of organic, but it's really about um, a, a piece building on itself over a period of time. I often work with systems that have a beginning, middle, and an end. It's usually like a repetition of some kind of pattern that I've figured out. I just started noticing over the course of developing these patterns and systems that I really am sort of executing a life process, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's sequentially organized. It kind of always reads left to right. And that's why the globe stuff is a new body of work for me because it's not sequential. It's not left to right. It's entities. Often with my work, it takes forever to kind of get to the final result, and and I just want to see what it's going to look like, see if it's even worth pursuing. But I kind of think it will be. So six and a quarter. The piece I'm doing now for the McKnight Show is made up of identical modules, so that basically the the physical structure is symmetrical, a symmetrical floating shape, but the beads as they get you know, applied will actually create an asymmetrical pattern throughout this network of, of modules. I'm a little nervous about whether this is gonna, I mean, when I get, I'm gonna only be able to build these out to about this stage in my studio, and then I'm gonna bring many of these into the space, and then I'm gonna have to connect them on site, so I hope it works out okay. <laughs> I moved into the building because my studio got so small I couldn't finish making these. And I made another additional 48 pods here on site in a classroom back there. And much with the help of MCAD staff, I mean, they all came in there and we were just like 
beading frenzies. We had a bead sorting table, a stringing table. My mother was there. Um, you know, it was just a big picnic of beading. Of course, as usual, I had my ideas of how I wanted it to be, and this is absolutely not what I thought. So I really reformatted the piece to be more elongated so that the viewer could kind of come in and see it and actually have to get underneath it in order to see the whole thing. That's kind of the nature of installation work. You know, you kind of have to respond to the space. It gets a little nerve wracking because, you know, you come in with an idea and then it's just like it ends up completely changing. But then again, that's part of the creative process, which is why I make art. And I think I've pushed the work. Before I was using the globes as sort of individual objects. Now I'm starting to use the globes as actual units of building, which is exciting for me. It kind of brings me back to what I was using before in terms of using multiples to build large pieces. So that's been great, you know, another little new avenue I'll probably want to keep pursuing. <laughs>